How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So we're back here editing another photo today and today we're looking at a photo that I captured in Bryce Canyon about a month and a half ago and really cool image I think. We have all the little hoodoos in the in our kind of the bottom of our frame and then we've got this really cool sunset up in the sky, excuse me, sunrise and I think it's a really neat image. Um, very very basic composition, nothing too crazy and so this should be a pretty easy pretty easy edit so let's jump into the computer here and start working on this so first off I am working in Lightroom Classic and I think the first thing that I want to do is I need to kind of balance out some of these colors so we're just gonna go over here to our adjustments and we're just gonna kind of work down so first thing I want to look at is our white balance I think our white balance is pretty okay uh, we don't want to go too too cool but we don't want to be too warm either Always avoid nuclear orange warm. I think right there is about pretty good. It was pretty warm morning. So, and again, when these rocks are hit by that morning light, it just creates this really cool glowing, warm glowing effect. And it's, so we want to be able to bring that into this image. So, um, our tint, it feels a little purple. So I'm going to bring it a little towards the greens. Uh, that's too far. Probably about right there. So we do before, after, before, after. Uh, very subtle adjustments. Let's see. Let's do, let's bring up our shadows just a hair. Yeah, we'll bring down our highlights. Actually, we might even bring in our, our exposure as a whole. And maybe our highlights, we might dump our highlights actually. No, not quite. We'll keep it about right there, I think. Um, maybe raise our whites a little bit, and I think we'll leave our blacks right there. Let's see. Shadows just a little bit more. Okay, I think that's good as far as just our our, our starting global adjustments. So we'll do a before and an after. This is kind of our starting spot. All right, so now I am going to come down to the uh, the tone curve. I just want to kind of see what this does. Um, I don't know. It's not really gonna do. Not really gonna do much. All right. I think what I want to do now is take this. Actually, let's put the the HSL here real quick. I just want to see what happens when I start messing with some of these colors. Wow, that's pretty. Um, let's see. I do like adding a little bit of yellow saturation. Get the oranges. All right. You know what? We're actually just, we're just gonna take this into Photoshop and be do a little bit of selective editing here. So I'm gonna hit Command E, and then just gonna dump this photo over to Photoshop. All right. So we're here in Photoshop. So I've got my background layer. Um, I always like to just, I'll do a command J and I'll create two duplicates of my background layer just so I have a little bit more uh, more room to, to work with. I always like to keep one layer that's untouched at the very bottom just in case. And that's just, that's just the workflow that I like to do. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, layer one copy and I'm going to come up here to select and I'm gonna turn this into a sky layer. Okay, that did mostly a good job. I'm gonna come over here to my little uh, quick select tool. I'm gonna hit the little plus tab up here at the top. And we just gotta come over here and uh, click this mountain right here. It didn't quite select that. So we're just gonna um, add this. Oh, you know what? Actually, we wanna do minus, my bad. It did select it, we wanted to unselect it. Okay. And it looks kind of rough right now, but it's going to snap into place kind of like that. It's usually pretty good about figuring out what what you're wanting it to uh, highlight and select. All right, that is not too bad right there. And you don't have to do this. You don't have to go through and select your sky in every single 
imaged. It's just it's something that I like to do just to kind of split things up a little bit. So, okay, so we have our sky selected. Let's hit select and mask. You can also come up to the select tab and also hit select and mask in there. I'm gonna set my output to layer mask. Hit okay. Okay, so now we have a selection of our sky. So now what I wanna do is just kinda kind of analyze this scene and figure out what I want to do. So we have the sun coming in from our left side over here. And as you can see, there's a couple light hits on some of these uh, some of these hoodoos. And so we want to accentuate that a little bit, kind of amplify that sun. And yeah, like we've got, if you zoom in, we've got some more spots up here on the uh, on this clip face. And so we'll just kind of work through and highlight uh, a lot more of these uh, these light hits. So I'm going to zoom back out. And I think what I want to do, first off, I'm going to click on my foreground layer. And I'm going to do a curves adjustment. Make sure I hit option and then click. Whoops, we're copying. Hit option and then when this little arrow comes up, that means we're going to attach that adjustment layer to our uh, base layer that we're, that we're going to be affecting. So we'll connect that and okay so now this curves adjustment will only affect uh, this bottom layer right here. So I'm going to just kind of play around with this, see what this gets me. Uh, it adds a little bit of contrast, I'm not a huge fan of what it's doing though. I don't know, that's not bad right there. Uh, very subtle. Yeah, I don't know, that's not too bad. Okay, so I'm gonna do a, um, we'll do a dodge layer. So I created a new layer right here. I'm gonna hit option and then connect that again. Why is it doing that? There we go. And I'm gonna set the blend mode to overlay. And now I'm gonna hit B on my for to pull up my brush. Make sure my my color here is set to a kind of warmer white. And then I'm gonna come down. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a luminosity mask. So I'm going to come up here to my TK luminosity mask plugin. Uh, if you're curious about this plugin, it's free. It's offered by Adobe and you can go get it in the, uh, the creative cloud shop. Like I said, it's free and there are a lot, there are a lot of other luminosity mask plugins you can get. Um, there are some really detailed ones that you have to pay for and they're great. You can use them. Um, and they're, they're really, really awesome overlay or uh, excuse me plugins but i really like this this luminosity mask one this free one it, it's very simple to use so i just i have my my layer right here i'm going to come up to my luminosity mask uh tool panel i'm just going to click this little interface button and it's going to bring up all of my little luminosity masks so basically i have all of my darks and i have all of my lights and then some mid-tones masks so remember when selecting these that white reveals and black conceals so anything that's white on here is going to be what's being affected by the mask and anything that's black or a darker gray is going to be what's not as affected as much by the by the mask so as you can see on this there really is no absolute white and absolute gray so there's a lot of uh variation in what's uh, what's being affected so i mean if we went over to our light six for example it would only select the brightest, brightest part of our image. Same thing with the darks. With the dark six, it would only select the very darkest points on our image. So I like to keep it about, I think for this one we'll do, uh, we don't want to do, I don't know, Mintos might be fine actually. Maybe we'll do our mid-tones. Uh, as you can see, it's it's kind of selecting some of these little peaks, and little hoodoos that we do want to hit a little bit stronger. And so maybe we'll try this one, yeah. Okay, so now we have that, that mid-tones three. I think that was mid-tones three. Um, connected to our uh, dodge layer. So now I have my brush, I have my um, kind of peachy color. I want to make sure my opacity is down. We'll keep it about maybe 12, 13%. Flow, eh, 20 is fine, I think. I want to make sure our hardness is set to 0%. It's just so it's you don't get any straight lines. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in. I'm just gonna start selectively painting in some of this these lighter spots. And be be really selective when you're doing this. So like you don't need to brush everything over really fast and like be take your time and just be really really selective. One of the reasons I love using these uh, luminosity masks is that way when I'm doing these dodge and burn layers, I avoid putting any of this brighter color into shadow areas that I don't want brighter color in. So it kind of helps to to guide, you know, where I'm I'm brushing in color, makes it feel less messy. So. One little tip, um, if you're using this brush tool in Photoshop, uh, if you're wanting to increase or decrease the size of your brush by just using a, a hotkey on the keyboard, uh, use your little your little bracket keys um, up on the top right of your keyboard. This kind of helps to speed up this process a little bit. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So let's do it before and after, before, after, before, after. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Put a lot of light on this canyon wall and we, we did it in a way that I think makes sense. So yeah, before, after, I like that. Okay, I think I might do a little bit of a burn layer. So I'm gonna do the same thing, create another uh, blank layer mask, or uh, excuse me, just a blank layer here and hold down option, make sure that's connected. And I might do, let's see here. Um, hmm. What do we wanna do? Let's do a darks one. Now we'll make sure that our brush is, um, has this uh, has the black color on it and we'll zoom in here and just start kind of hitting some of these shadow areas just a little bit we don't want to be real heavy with this uh, we want to be way more subtle with this than we do with the uh, with the highlight color just trying to create a little bit of contrast I think one of my favorite things about uh, shooting photos in Bryce Canyon is you get a lot of these spots where these little hoodoos are getting backlit because the sun comes in and it hits you know these rocks over here to the side and then that light reflects off those rocks and then hits the rocks that are in front of it. So you get some weird different light patterns going on and different different these 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 hoodoos end up being lit up in really strange ways and it's really cool. Before, after, before, after. Very, very subtle and very selective as well. So, um, okay. Now let's do, let's see. So I have a little bit of an issue with some of these trees and I think what we're gonna do, they just need to be brightened up just a little bit. I tried doing it with this other dodge layer, but it just wasn't working very well. So I'm gonna create, so I'm gonna create another layer Make sure that's connected. And I'm gonna select the luminosity mask that'll select these trees, which it looks like it might be uh, darks one. So yeah, let's select darks one. So we're gonna do a dodge layer with the darks one mask. And let's make sure our brush is set to that highlight. And we're gonna be very, very careful with this. So we only wanna hit, whoops, we gotta set our blend mode. Um, did we set this one? You know what? Our our uh, burn layer, we did not select a uh, different uh, blend mode. So let's change that. Let's make sure that we are on um, soft light. So that just helps that color just to blend just a little bit better. So in this one, let's make sure our color is set to, or, or excuse me, our blend mode is set to overlay. Zoom back into these trees and let's just start hitting some of these 
these greener spots. Again, we're being very, very careful with this. Let's see if we're even doing anything. Yep, we are, very subtly. Okay, that's not bad. We are gonna try to lighten up these, uh, the trunks just a little bit. Just try to get a little bit more detail in there. Not gonna be able to get too much, but brighten them up just a tad. Hit that little guy down there. Make sure we get these highlighted areas on this tree. Turn this into a bigger mask. Do kind of a broad stroke in the middle of that. And hit that guy up there. Okay, so now we'll do before, after, before, after. Just breathing a little bit more life into those uh, pine trees there. So, okay, I think now what I want to do is, um, let's see, let's play with the color a little bit. Uh, just play with this color balance, and we'll do our mid-tones, add maybe a little bit of yellow. Um, I don't like that too much. Maybe let's add some red. Before, after, we want to be careful that we're not making this green. So... I think that's maybe fine though. Oops. No magenta. We don't want to do magenta. Let's check our highlights. If you add too much yellow, it starts turning green. So you want to be able to counter that. Okay, I think that's I think that's fine right there. Okay. Let's work on the sky. So I'm going to click a, let's do a curves. Make sure that our curves layer is connected to that sky layer. Gosh dang it. Let's just see what we can do with this. We want to be able to make it dramatic, but not unrealistic. That's pretty cool. And we'll come down here. We'll have to brighten up this this little area down at the, the left here, but um, that's actually pretty neat right there, I think. Um, let's do a selective color layer. Better blues. Let's just see what this does. Add a little bit more blue into that, I think. Um, yellows. I don't know if I like that that much. Okay, uh, I think that's kind of cool for the clouds. So let's do a, uh, I'm gonna do another layer here. I'm gonna turn this into a um, somewhat of a uh, dodge layer. I need to brighten up this little section of the horizon right here. So I'm going to expand my brush size and just kind of brighten this up a little bit. kind of cool maybe we'll tone our opacity down to like 80 percent yeah that's neat i wasn't liking this very much because if you can see uh navajo mountain here in the in the background when before we made that adjustment it just didn't look very good like it looked like it was it looked too fake basically <laughs> so it didn't look like it belonged um so by brightening up this uh, this section, it makes it so it actually would look like Navajo Mountain is being um, being silhouetted right there. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. I like this a lot. This might actually end up being pretty simple. So let's do a, I'm gonna create just a, a standard um, brush layer here. And we're gonna keep this one on normal because we're gonna create a little somewhat of like a haze right here on the on the horizon and make sure our opacity flow everything's down very low and just be very very subtle with this I think that's pretty good right there we just want to kind of create depth it's always good to remember that things that are further away in your scene 
are typically not going to have a lot of detail to them. So if we can take away a little bit of that detail, then it'll it'll help bring a little bit more depth into our into our photo. Awesome. I think it looks pretty good right there. So we'll do it before, after, before and after. Yeah, I like that. Uh, we might actually expand this um, dodge layer um, a little further, just kind of lighting up more of that uh, horizon. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe just hitting some of those little spots in the clouds. Nothing really crazy. Like I said, we don't want this to be fake looking. So, okay. I like that. So what I'm going to do now is just combine all of these. I'm going to come down to my, my layer one. And I recommend labeling uh, all your la layers on here. I'm not doing that just because I'm, I'm I, I just, I don't know. I don't. And maybe that's, that's dumb of me. A lot of people do. And maybe it's just because I'm a bad Photoshop user. I don't know. Anyway, so I have all of my layers selected. I'm gonna hit Command, Option, Shift, and E. That is going to create a combined layer for everything right there at the top. And I'm gonna come over to Filter. I'm gonna hit Camera Raw Filter. I'm gonna take this into Camera Raw. And I just want to, whoops. And I just want to uh, create a little bit of um, a vignette. So, and just kind of do some, do some radial gradients. I typically like doing radial gradients in Camera Raw more than Photoshop, just because I struggle with the the gradient filters or the the gradient adjustments in, in Photoshop, and I just find that they're so much easier to use in Camera Raw, and so I just it's it's not that hard to push things into Camera Raw. So I am going to create a small layer right here and create just a little bit. Make sure my feather is all the way up. Just bump my maybe my whites just a little bit. I want to be careful that we're not blowing out those highlights on the uh, left side. So we'll do. Maybe we'll actually add a little bit of. We'll pull down the dehaze just a tad. I think it's fine. We'll add a little bit of warmth. Yeah, I think that's good right there. Before, after, very subtle. Okay. We're going to create another radiant uh, filter and I'm just gonna select this this middle section right here this is not something you have to do it's something I sometimes like to do in my photos I'll put it onto my main subject um, the radial filter that is and then I'll just boost the whites just a tad just to bring a little bit more focus into that uh that center area so I like that we'll do another radial gradient and let's see let's do we're gonna invert this. Um, let me pull down our feather. Okay, now let's pull our exposure down. Oh yeah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. Pull our black sound just a little bit. Okay, that's great. That's looking really cool. So we'll do before, after, before and after. Just drawing a little bit of our focus to the center of that frame. So yeah, that that's really neat. Um, I wanna play with color grading just a little bit, maybe adding a little bit of blue to the shadows, just seeing what that looks like. And then pumping my mid-tones up to orange. Uh, right there, we'll do. I actually, I like that a lot. That adds a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, a little bit better uh, color contrast. So rather than everything just being straight orange, so I like that. We might actually bump the oranges, the the, the luminance in the oranges, up just a little bit. All right, I think that's cool. So we'll do before, after, before, after. Um, I might actually. Let's see. Let's take a small brush here. And I could just do this back in Photoshop, but I'm just gonna do it. Since I'm here in Camera Raw, I'm just gonna do it in Camera Raw. I'm gonna brush this really highlighted spot right here. And let's we'll see if this actually works. I'm gonna hit my highlights. And just bring that section down just a little bit, just to pull those highlights down. Yeah, I think that, I think that works pretty well, so. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's bring this back into Photoshop. We'll hit okay. 
yeah, I'm really liking how this uh, is turning out. Okay, so we have our camera raw layer right here. So I'm gonna hit Command J, create a duplicate. I'm gonna do a little Gaussian blur um, or an effect on here. So I'll come over to blur, uh, Gaussian blur. Uh, we have a meta megapixel of about 24, so we'll keep it at 24.7. Hit OK, and then we're gonna hit image adjustments. Actually, first, so let's we have our Orton effect layer here. We want to target only our highlights. So we're going to hit the uh, TK luminosity masks and we'll do a lights one because highlights glow, shadows do not. It's just something that's that's good to keep in mind. So now we have this affecting only our highlights. We'll come over to image adjustment and we're going to crunch this contrast. Maybe, maybe boost the highlight or brightness just a little bit. Okay, add a little bit more warmth. This is going to look real messy for a minute. It always does. Okay. Now it looks totally nuclear right now, but we're going to hit our blend mode, come down to soft light, our opacity come over to, um, I think 30 is probably good for this one. So we'll do before, after, before, after just adds a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a uh, color pop and contrast pop to this that I, that I really like. So, Okay, this is <laughs> this is looking really cool. I actually really really like this image. So uh, we'll do this since that camera raw layer is our new base layer. We're gonna click that one and we're gonna combine it. Or uh, yeah, we're gonna combine it with the Orton effect layer. So we'll hit our base, our new base layer, and then I'm just gonna hit Shift, hit that Orton effect layer, Command Option Shift E, and now we have what we're gonna use as our high pass filter layer come over to uh, filter at the top come down to other hit high pass I uh, want to keep this very low I think this one will actually drop it to about 1.8 and we hit OK blend layer soft light and that just sharpens everything up just a little bit so I I really like this I think this is really really cool so I'm going to come over here select everything and hit flatten image and then I'm going to hit Command W. Uh, we want to hit Save, and this is going to throw this back over into Lightroom. And I like to do this just because I don't like to have a bunch of Photoshop documents laying around. I like to have everything saved within uh, Lightroom, and it kind of keeps everything a little bit better organized. So we'll wait for this to, to upload. Come back to Lightroom. Okay, so there's our final image I might actually take um, some of this and maybe just tone the saturation down just a little bit maybe we'll do like four because we don't want to have everything be you know what no I do I do like that yeah that's really cool okay so here we have our before shot and we did all of our adjustments in Lightroom, and then we took it into Photoshop, and we ended up with this. So, I really think this is a, a neat image. I, I like this a lot. So, I might... Um, I don't want to mess with my clarity too much. I think we'll just... I think we'll keep it at this. I think my only gripe with this photo is maybe a slight composition one. I wish that I had taken the time maybe to arrange some of the, the hoodoos a little bit better, and just to kind of create a uh, uh, it's a little bit of better flow I guess through the image so it's a little messy and unless you look at it really closely it's it's kind of hard to see like where things are at at times and and there's just there's not like a lot of dynamic flow from the uh, the foreground to the background so it's kind of a it feels very flat I guess so that's my only gripe with this but I think by doing a little bit of dodging and burning it does help to create a little bit of depth into this into this image so so I really like this a lot. Let me know what you think about it, if you like it, if you don't. Uh, let me know if you would have done something a little bit different, and I, I would love to hear it. So, um, But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe and like, comment. Again, comment on this photo. Let me know what you think about it. And make sure you come back next time. So we, we're doing these week videos weekly. They come out every Sunday. So subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. And I hope you have a good one, and we will see you next time. Bye.